are you know interested in training our students to become creative leaders not just using them for their army of brushes but involving them in the more integral parts of creating public art we see murals all the time especially in urban um, areas but how and where did that start? Where did the process I'm start? The gallery. I'm not producing art for our grandparents uh, for their anniversary. I mean, this is for the public, so that much is true. One thing that we're really proud of is we know there's a lot of public art happening in Akron, which we think is great, we love it. But what sets us apart from other public art programs or organizations is that we are educational based. So we have a curriculum that's set up with this to the University of Akron because we're not just inviting people in to be like, okay, help us paint this mural, okay, now leave. It's the entire process, learning how to like budget, how to design a mural. How do you get an idea that's on a napkin onto a wall? And getting to see the whole process too, like the budgeting and the planning and trying to meld like 20 people's ideas into one cohesive thought is not easy <laughs> at all. I, mean, I would definitely like to learn a lot more about public art, public art funding, all of those things. Um, as somebody who's going to be a teacher, I think that's really important. I need to learn a bit more about grant writing, not just for my own personal projects. Once I'm a teacher, I would love to organize a school mural or to encourage my kids to get out there and make community art. A lot of the things that I brought the students in were the complete understanding of how to build a program, not just put a piece of art on the wall. And then you have the spokes that go out into these communities, like East, that's a neighborhood, Kenmore, Highland Square, West Hill. So we're a very typical Midwest kind of city, and our nucleus doesn't compact this enough to make us walkable. I think our cities... They managed the budget, um, they did the t-shirt design, they did the t-shirt printing. We went up to Cleveland to look at murals. We walked around Akron to look at murals and analyze design and think about site-specific works. So they got a taste for all of the, the many variables that go into creating something this big. And what most people don't see when they see a mural on the wall is the intense, many-phase, multi-phase steps of how we got here. Ultimately here, I'm using the, the art process and the art therapy directives to help clients um, reach their best self. You know, what does recovery mean to them and how can they live a, a healthy, full life, even um, with the challenges that they experience with their mental health diagnosis. With this population of individuals who have severe and persistent mental illness, there are often a lot of um, emotional components that they aren't able to express. So having that contained and creative outlet gives them that chance. Most public arts murals you see are not participatory in design. So you have an artist who designs it, or you have a client, and they want something, and it's commissioned. And this is always a tricky situation to let things grow organically. So I'm really, really actually very proud of the team of un university students and the group of folks in arts therapy from CSS and the way they came together and really muscled through a very long process. I think some of our more diverse communities are polarized and or left out. Arts become a pay to play uh, endeavor. We took this from concept to completion and it turned out beautifully. It was a great opportunity for us to integrate our clients that we work with on a daily basis and it's very therapeutic for them as well to participate in the process and the results were absolutely outstanding. I was happy that we came up with six or seven really high quality designs that we could have been confident with on the wall. And so the best part for me was that uh, sense of collaboration. So over the past two years, we would usually have a lead artist or a resident type of artist come in and kind of design and lead that way. This time we started completely from scratch, working with the students. On top of that, we had also invited community partners to come in and help design, um, which is completely new for us. The big thing we're looking for with our mural is that we want to start conversation. We want to bring attention to a building and an organization and a group of people that I think it's really easy to brush to the side when they absolutely should be praised for what they're doing. Oftentimes there's isolation that can come with um, experiencing mental illness. So being able to be kind of front and center and have their voices heard 
um, their ideas considered was a really, really special opportunity for them. The building itself is super institutionalized, like, um, blah. I don't, I don't know how else to describe it. It's really nondescript. You would never know what it is. I've driven past it a million times and never looked twice at it, so it's just kind of an empty space. The building itself is unfortunate looking, so um, adding something to it I think will jazz it up a bit. I hope it speaks for what they do there. From talking to the people from CSS, they give them so much hope and they help them with so many things more than just their mental illness. We had about six designs that made it to the final ranks and then we had the folks at CSS select the final design. I came up with the idea about using geese because every once in a while I come by and I'd see geese right here in the yard. Her name's Megan. Uh, she took my idea and ran with it and it turned into something very beautiful. I never dreamed they would pick an idea I actually come up with. Our friend Alex Campbell, who is here every single day working with him, I think that was really great for all of us, really. His enthusiasm and his, like, go get it attitude with this and just his, like, lightness. We had people on the roof, yeah, scaffolding the roof. We always have ladders everywhere, and there's only a couple people that are ever willing to get up that high, so that's always <laughs> really fun. Usually it's Elisa and I. Anything that was higher than five feet, I tried to stay at what was like eye level to me because I can't, I can't crouch down on the ground, I can't sit on the ground, and I can't get on a ladder like really high. So there's like a half inch between each of these bricks, so you have to get in there and it soaks it up because it's so porous. So if you put like a stroke of paint, it'll just soak right in. So like 13 more strokes of paint always makes it very difficult to work on anything like this. I was displeased with the weather. And I have to say that that's the goofy part of doing some outside uh, public art is that you can't predict those things. Um, I'm really comfortable working with unknown variables. So we started out with eight artist um, participants who were involved in the project and over the course of the many weeks um, there you know were various issues that came up for some of the folks um, we had some mental health challenges take place we had some physical health challenges and I think it was a, a nice reminder kind of realization for us here that this is the reality of what our clients experience here. Sometimes it's kind of hard to tell the difference between Who's, this, who's the Akron U student and who's the CSS person. We all kind of mesh together. And that, that's an awesome thing, that it becomes, that that line becomes blurred because then we all just become artists. We're not students and, and clients. We're, we're all artists and that's a really cool thing to work together with. I've honestly had some of my own battles that have required some assistance um, with mental health. I'm not embarrassed about it anymore. It's, I actually am pretty open about it because I want people to know that I'm okay. I've, I've, <laughs> I've been through hell and back and I'm still here and I'm trying to paint and show people that there is beauty out in the world. I myself have dealt with mental health issues quite a bit. Um, I also have some family and friends who have severe and persistent um, mental health disorders. Being a mother, I had to deal with postpartum anxiety and postpartum depression. And then with my father passing away, it was very traumatic. I had PTSD from that. And that was like not even two years ago. So those types of things, like, I understand the stigma. And that's part of the reason I don't like to talk about it. Alex 
was kind of our star um, participant. And so for him, it was, I think, um, even that much more important for him to be part of it the whole way through. I've never felt this problem my entire life. And uh, people recognize me, and now they recognize me even more because of the wall. I can't believe how beautiful, colorful it is. And it's something I never, ever dreamed would happen in my, my lifetime. It has a sense of, like, it invigorates you. Right, it gives a sense of energy because of the movement and the color. Hope is the foundation of the recovery process for our clients. Without that, there, there wouldn't be a place to start from. If someone driving by gets a little happier on their way to work, that's a win. If someone sees the word hope and reminds themselves to chill out, that's a win. If someone seeks out services because they know that CSS is the building with this big bright mural that has, you know, geese on it, that's a huge win. For me, it just resonates a warmth and a joy um, and sort of a high impact spirited uplift.